Hi guys, my name is Vidhi Gaurav Balana and welcome back to my channel 5 Minute Economics where I teach economic concepts in a span of just 5 minutes. The topic for today is a very complicated topic, hinting you in advance only, which is called the John Robinson's Model of Economic Growth. Yes guys, I've done growth theories in uh, previously also I've done many of them I'll attach the link in the comment section below and like Harold Omori had already told me to make more of growth theory so I'm here with this video I've tried my best to simplify this topic um, not keeping a lot of equation based but more of explanation based diagrammatical early I've explained it graphically with examples assumptions and everything what I could do best from my end so yeah i hope this video helps you guys and do like this video if you found this useful and also please please do subscribe to my channel in case you haven't already and yeah also guys follow me on my instagram handle five minute economics for some very interesting content so guys let me firstly quickly introduce this very topics to you and what are we going to study ahead in this video so basically this model was given in the year 1956 by mrs john robinson in her book the accumulation of capital where she spoke about a pure capitalist economy here guys what we study i mean what she studied basically is that how economies grow how it focuses like how much money people make and how it is distributed and that distribution how it affects the capital of the economy affects the growth of the economy it also deals with the population problem and also the effects of population on the rate of capital accumulation so don't be confused we are going to be focusing on the two fundamentals number one is that the distribution of income influences capital formation but obvious guys if there is income a lot of people have income i mean someone has a lot of income they can save that money if they save they invest and then investment basically means capital formation we'll be doing that all of that now and secondly that utilization of labor depends on the availability of labor and capital both so these are the two things which we are going to be focusing on moving ahead to the assumptions without which uh, no economic model is actually complete so here guys we are saying that income is distributed between two people one is entrepreneur one is labor so we are having laborers and entrepreneurs laborers always get wages and entrepreneurs gets profit i hope you know the fop factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneurs so we are going to be talking about laborers and entrepreneurs in its model workers spend everything they don't have any savings so who are going to save the entrepreneurs basically they will lead to capital accumulation or capital formation there is no change in price level everything stagnant this is a laissez faire closed economy laissez faire means capital so i hope you know that closed economy no dealing outside the capital and labor are combined in a fixed ratio to give the given output and lastly there is no shortage of labor there's abundant labor entrepreneurs can have how much labor they want to employ okay moving ahead guys let's come to the crux of this video so guys john robinson actually focused a lot on capital she that's why this model is called john robinson's model of capital accumulation as well right she said that you know uh, let us talk in two terms uh, she said that division of money affects how businesses grow of course we've told that this, uh, you know money is divided into uh, entrepreneurs and laborers we know workers or laborers they spend everything they basically can't save any money but entrepreneurs they tend to save the profit and put back in the business for economic growth businesses of course use a fixed amount of capital and labor and since it's a laissez faire capitalist economy government doesn't interfere now coming to the outcome income side of uh, sorry i've written outcome i believe it's output income side of capital accumulation so basically guys in this we will study that net national income as i just told you is divided between total wage bill and total profits basically what we uh, laborers earn and what you know entrepreneurs earn now i have written this in short only ni national income or net national income is wb that is the total you know wage bills and basically the total profits okay this is what this equation is like what i've uh, written now y is equal to now i've changed a little making it more of economic terms you know national income in economics is termed as y so y is equal to wn plus pk where w y stands for net national income w stands for real wage rate N stands for number of workers, P stands for profit rate, and K stands for amount of capital. Nothing difficult. Remember, guys, ये हम workers की बात करें. So wages into N number of workers, profit into K that is the amount of capital. So this basically, if we have for supposedly thirty and N number of workers does है, ten है, and P is forty and K is twenty. If we just multiply, multiply, and add, we can get our total national income if we have these things, which is equal to eleven hundred. 
Now here in this model, the focus is a lot on profits because profits ultimately, what are those profits which are put back in the business for capital accumulation. So P is our main focus. So if you know mathematics, I'm sure you know because economics and mathematics go hand in hand, sadly. So if you know this guys, if you want this equation in terms of P, what will happen? Y minus W N or K ko hum niche denominator me lirenge. This is what this equation will look like over here I've written, okay. And now if we divide this equation both by you know, denominator and numerator by n, n is what again number of workers, we will get y upon n minus w and k divided by n. Might look difficult but just do it yourself once. You'll write it and do it, you'll understand it. Where y n stands for labor productivity and k n stands for capital labor ratio. This is what this equation looks like now. And now if we assume y n to be l, I'll tell you why later on. We just put this as L and K divided by N as theta. So our final equation is L minus W upon theta. So this is basically the output income side of capital accumulation. So now guys, I have discussed the income point of view. Coming to the expenditure point of view, again, it's very simple, might look complicated, follow me. Okay, so Y is equal to C plus I. You must have studied this equation multiple times. Y basically is the net national income, C is the consumption expenditure, whereas I is the income expenditure, uh, investment expenditure, my bad, sorry. So I always is investment in economics, I is not income, income is always denoted by Y rise. Okay, and by Keynes model, I'm sure you all know this, if you not study that, you can't study this. So I'm sure you already studied that basically. S is equal to I, that's savings equal to investment according to Keynes. And according to this model, savings is equal to PK. Remember, just to remind a little, PK was what the, we studied what the profit from the capital was coming. Yeah, the entrepreneurs were say, uh, doing that. And we said whatever profit they, you know, saved, they invested. So that S is equal to PK. Now, if we have these equations, we have S is equal to I, S is equal to PK. So basically, I is equal to PK, right? Isn't it, guys? And in economics, uh, I is always written as delta k, uh, basically it is the increase of increasing rate of capital, you know, jitna capital badega, delta basically denotes increasing, right? jitna capital pada hai, utni investment ho hai, that's why we can denote i as delta k, so replacing i by delta k, we get delta k is equal to p, and now following the mathematical equation, bringing p this side, delta k upon k is our last thing what we are going to get, this is the growth rate of capital basically guys, this is the expenditure point of view and L minus W upon theta is what we just discussed, which was the income point of view. These both are equal to each other. So profit is equal to delta K upon K is equal to L minus W upon theta. This is your last and final thing what you have to understand. Moving ahead to the golden age guys, you must have heard this term golden age. Well, yes, this is a part of this model. We told in the beginning, we have two fundamentals. We are done with one. The second fundamental is what we're going to be talking about is the golden age guys where we say that the growth rate of population is equal to the growth rate of capital. It means an economy has as much uh, growth of population, as much growth of capital. It basically, in equation, this is an important equation. You have to learn. I hate uh, learning equations and making my students do so. But yeah, at times you have to learn. So delta N upon N is the growth rate of population is equal to delta K upon K is the growth rate of capital. And this means that the growing capital can absorb all the population. Jitna bhi capital hai, people are getting absorbed in it. That's a very good thing. Golden age, as the name suggests. Diagrammatically, let us study this. On the x-axis, which is extended to the back, we have growth rate of labor and growth rate of capital, both on the x-axis and per capita output on the y-axis. Keeping it very simple, from the origin, we have a production function curve, which is P, and T is our tangent. The point at which this tangent coincides with this production function is the golden age. Well, this is the G point, uh, which is the golden age point, guys. At golden age, we can see that AO, I've also written it for you all, AO is the amount of output we have, OW is the amount of wages we are giving, and AW is our surplus. So at golden age, we can see this is the surplus we are saving, and uh, we are having basically surplus amount, and this is the amount we are spending on wages, and this is what our total output is. So this is diagrammatically what the model looks like. So this is what the model looks like, guys. In conclusion, I would like to say that Mr. John Robinson highlighted how important it is uh, planning and investing uh, basically for um, a developing country is how you know money is distributed, then saved and then invested for capital accumulation. So I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video pretty soon.